Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated to providing you with life strategies with a little bit of entrepreneur advice. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey everyone, Michelle Gomez, your connection enthusiast, coming back with a special episode. Uh, so earlier this month, or last month, May, I had a chance to speak on People Fund, the seven steps to creating an influential personal brand, and I decided to share my presentation with you. So I'm going to apologize in advance for the noise volume as I recorded on my phone. Um, but I really enjoy talking about my seven steps to creating an influential personal brand. I believe it is a tangible, uh, substance-based content. And I really do think these seven steps separate me from the rest. Uh, you have a lot of experts telling you to create a website, which is important. Um, storytelling, video, um, and post on social media four, five, six times a day. And yes, all of that is important, right? Um, and it is necessary to grow your following. But there's definitely a process that is involved in order for you to hit everyone, uh, starting with yourself, uh, then branching out to everyday people, your target audience, your avatar, and then eventually reaching out to media. And then, of course, monetizing or learning how to monetize along the process. So if you're not familiar with the seven steps, Real quickly, number one is core message. Establish a core message. Two is create a platform. Podcasting is my platform. Uh, three is get social with your story. Four is create an emotional impact. So once you have your story, which is an extension of your core message, you need to put those elements to make your story better, right? The emotional impact, of the ups and downs that you've experienced. You know the test and the testimony uh, number five is the triad of influence which consists of relationships audience and community number six is from connections to collab excuse me from connections to credibility talking about how to um, connect with the right people in order for you to collaborate as well as get media attention and then number seven is show me the money, right? So in this presentation, it was pretty quick because I'm running out of time uh, with the scheduling format that day. Um, but I do discuss those seven steps. And although I've been speaking at People Fund for years and presenting on this topic for, I want to say, a year and a half now, I am currently working on a workbook. Uh, seven Steps to Creating an Influential Personal Brand Workbook. Uh, so I'm really excited to finally do that. And I think this is the right time for me to create and deliver this workbook because although I knew, right, I, I knew the seven steps when I sat down in 2017, it's really about receiving the feedback from people, right? So now I've had a chance to speak to numerous audiences, small business owners, nonprofits, students, um, college students, I should say, um, tech um, experts, um, uh, just a, v a wide variety of people that have provided me feedback over the past uh, year or two and taking that in and going deeper um, because even though I'm giving you the seven steps, a lot of people struggle. It's like, okay, how do I create the story? Where do I begin with a story? And um, I'm hoping with the workbook, I will ask the right questions. I will provoke thought in order for you to really uh, search within and pull out this information that's going to help you not just put it on paper, but to relay that information that's going to help you uh, grow your audience, right? Um, and enhance your brand. And I don't know what bigger and better looks like, but hopefully you'll accomplish your goal when it comes to uh, your personal brand and applying these seven steps. Uh, so I'm excited about this presentation. I'm excited to be working on the workbook. So please look out for that uh, sometime in July and August. Um, 
Uh, before I go into this, I want to let you know the African American Marketing Association, we have an event next week, Tuesday, June 11th, at the United Way Greater of Houston, titled Profitable PR. We have four publicists, expert publicists, with a diverse background that will be talking about uh, what is PR, right? What is public relationship? <laughs> what is public relations? Uh, when do you need to hire a publicist? How is that integrated into your overall marketing strategy? So I know PR has worked wonders for me. Um, I believe in it. So I can't wait to um, hear the panelists and hopefully see you there. So be on the lookout for that. I will have the link in the show notes. And of course, if you follow me on social media, all of that information will be there as well. Uh, let's see what else is going on. What is going on? Um, I'm actually working on an event August 3rd. It will be in Killeen, Texas. Uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> stay tuned for that. I'm going to be promoting that pretty soon. Really excited to partner with my my business bestie, Tanita Mullen from... I'm uh, probably going to get this wrong. Savvy Young Professional. Young Savvy Professional. I should know this by now. I've been on her show um, and we met 24... 24 15 at um at one of these podcasting conferences so excited to be working with her um, those details will be coming soon uh, we may need to jump on the mic and uh do a show as well um so much is going on um all i can say is keep up i'm not moving fast so i think you should be able to keep up um excited about everything you know even with all of the craziness i just remain humble and excited about my future because i know the best is yet to come so bear with me as i go into this presentation it is um i think about 30 something minutes let's see here 30 is 38 minutes um towards the last 10 to 15 minutes we go into q a and also, I provide a LinkedIn tip. So a lot of people do know me as a LinkedIn expert. And if you struggle with LinkedIn, one of the best ways to connect with people on LinkedIn is by turning on uh, your Bluetooth and connecting with people in your area. And this is great and efficient when you're at networking events, um, conferences, meetings, and you're having a conversation with them. If you already, if you have, especially if you have the LinkedIn app, it, I think it only works if you have the LinkedIn app um, and just boom, right there, you know, it's connected power of the smartphone and Bluetooth and all the other good technology. So I'll walk you through that process as well. And yeah, this people fun 2019 and we're ready. Cell phone recorders, iPads, y'all ready? All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Good afternoon. All right, great, great, great. So, if you are falling asleep next door, you're gonna wake up right now. Okay. I am so excited to be here. If you can't tell, my <laughs> my name is Michelle Gomez. I am a connection enthusiast, and clearly, the enthusiast part is already shiny, right? Okay. So, I'm gonna talk to you about the seven steps to creating an influential personal brand. Okay. So as you know, in this digital landscape, personal brand is everything, right? And I'm not here to debate you about personal brand, company brand, we're not gonna get into those semantics today. But I do know with your personal brand, that is your reputation, right? So wherever you go, that follows. And hopefully it gets there before you do sometimes, right? So, how many of y'all have a nine to five, have a day job? I do, okay. How many of y'all have a side hustle? I do. Full-time entrepreneurs? I used to, okay. All right. <laughs> so with your personal brand, you know, whether it's corporate or entrepreneurship, you need it, right? Because what I believe, this is why I don't get caught up in the company brand. What I believe is whether you go from job to job, or if you're a serial entrepreneur, your personal brand is gonna carry you. It's gonna bring that business, it's gonna bring that opportunity to you, okay? So that's why I believe in the personal brand. 
In 2013, I launched my company, Line 25 Consulting. That was what, about six years ago. And the year after, I wrote my first self-published book. The year after that, I wrote my, not wrote, I launched my podcast, Networking with Michelle. Flipped that into another book. I speak. Um, I love speaking here every year, as well as other gigs. And recently, I launched my Af the African American Marketing Association. This young lady's on the board with me. And I've been able to do all of these things by leveraging opportunities and creating the influential personal brand, OK? So people would ask me, Michelle, how do you do what you do? In most cases, say, I don't know. I just make it up as I go. <laughs> but there was that one day when I had a little extra time, and I pulled down all of the books on my little library. And I went through these marketing books from Gary Vee, George <coughs> Frazier, um, I can't even think, just marketing and business books. And I, was, I noticed the common theme through these books. And these were things, you know, these virtual mentors that I was reading and watching on YouTube. And this is what I learned from them. And I'm going to share that with you today. Are you ready? Yes. All right. This is only a picture. I don't do PowerPoints. Okay? <laughs> so there's no clickers. That's just the picture. Okay? <laughs> All right. Number one, you have to establish a core message. You have to establish a core message. Now, your core message is the nucleus of your brand. Is it okay if I get close? Yes. All right, cool. Your core message is the nucleus of your brand. Now, a lot of people get stuck at this, right? This is number one, because obviously you gotta get started. The thing is, you wanna take a self-assessment. What are your skills? What are those things that people usually come up to you asking, wanting your help, right? I believe we're all an expert in something, and we just have to demonstrate it. So, with that being said, how do you solve problems? What solutions do you provide to people, whether it's at work or within your business? When it comes to your core message, what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? All right, so we have our core message. Yes. It's real quickly, like, what is your core message? My core message? My, and my core message has evolved. Right now it's personal branding. Um, back then it started as networking. So, um, and I, I'll share my story with you all along. But my core message is literally the seven steps to create an influential personal brand. I was going to use that to kind of like understand how I was going to create mine. That's what I was asking. And all of it will make sense. And y'all can ask questions anytime. And, Hopefully by combination number seven, we'll be good. Okay, I'm going to tie it all in, all right, without the dancing, or maybe with the dancing. <laughs> okay. All right, so number two, you have a core message. Once you have your core message, you have to create a platform. You have to create a, a platform. Now, the platform can be a blog, a podcast, or a video. And I say video loosely, that can be YouTube, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, right? The platform is necessary because once you have your core message, you have to communicate that message. How are you going to get that message out? Can't keep this to yourself, you're too good. That's right. <laughs> right? So you have to create a platform. Um, I think having a website is literally a foundational piece, right? So the website's included. Um, when you go to my website, everything's there. Books, podcasts. Um, that's, I consider my website my house, the hub for everything Michelle go make. But going beyond the website, how are you going to communicate your message to people? Now, there's no wrong way. A lot of people are going to say video, video is in, right? A lot of us watch videos. I'm not going to discredit that. But some people are good writers. If you're a good writer, write. 
If you're great on video, do a video. There's a seat right here. Um, me, I have a Facebook radio, so I do a podcast. So you want to be able to communicate your message. That's the importance of the platform. So number three. Number three is get social with your story. Get social with your story. Now your story is an extension of your core message. Okay. So you're probably thinking, how am I going to create my story? Okay. So once you have your core message, just think of three, three points, three bullet points. For the message or the story? For the story. For the story. From your message to the story. Right? You have your message. Think of three stories that you can come up with. Yes. Three small stories you can come up with from the core message, right? All of this has to be aligned. What's an example of that? Yeah, I'm going to give you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, so. <laughs> All right. So before I give you my story, um, y'all have seen or read the book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek? Mm -hmm. okay. Start With Why? Start With Why, very popular book, or um, TEDx talk, TED Talk, you can check that out. So if you're having trouble trying to figure out your story, start with why. Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? From why, go to when. When did you decide to do what you do? In most cases, for a lot of us, because we're grown, there's, a, there's been that pivotal point in your life to be like, I don't want to do corporate anymore. Or I want to start a business because. I want to write a book because. That's your win. There was a pivotal moment. And then how? How do you do? what you do? How do you coach? How do you coach people's lives? How do you coach people through their finances? How do you guide them through their business development, creating a business plan? The values in the house. Now those are elements of your story. Those are three elements of your story right there. You need that story because people are, need to get to know you. We're going to add one more layer to that, right? So before I get into my example, number four is you have to provide an emotional impact. Right? So when you're outlining your story, you know, just little taking down notes of your story, you want to go in, add that extra layer, creating an emotional impact. My friend says, don't let your highs get too high, your lows get too low. So, you want to add those tidbits into your story. Everyone likes a success story, right? They're like, oh, I created this workshop and I, I sold 10, I'm earning $10,000. And you're like, damn, well, I can create a workshop. <laughs> I need $10,000. But how many people really talk about when I did that first presentation with only four people in the audience? That's the power of the story. Because if you start from, hey, you know, I decided to launch up my, my business as a financial expert, and, you know, I was like, oh, I can do financial workshops, and I put it on Eventbrite, and only four people showed up, and then, you know, you tweak some things, you got a marketer, you got a coach, whatever the case may be, things improved, you know, three months later, you did another workshop, I had a packed house, I sold out, and that's how you earn your $10,000. A lot of people skip that. And you're like, and then you get lost sometimes. Because you, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to do that. And then you, you can't or you can't replicate it. And if you get discouraged, it's like, well, I give up. But when you create that emotional impact and you bring people along your journey, you're relatable. You're relevant. So I told you earlier I started my marketing business in 2013, um, decided to quit corporate, did corporate finance for about seven years, and then I was like, I was in my 20s, thought I knew everything, I was naive, so I went rogue. And 
I remember I came across Texas A&M, and they had a leadership conference. And I was like, well, I'm a, I'm a professional speaker. I've never spoken a day in my life. I can apply. I can speak to some college kids. They don't, I know more than them. to apply for the next year, and they turned me down. Right? And life goes on, and who knows what I was doing. Probably skipped a year, and then in 2017, I applied, and they invited me to speak, not once, but twice. Right? And now I can say, hey, I spoke at Texas A&M XYZ Leadership. So lots of times, those moments, those silent moments that you keep to yourself, because you got those no's, and you can't post those no's on Facebook just yet. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait until it gets, you know, turns around and you get that yes. That's what I mean by creating emotional impact in your story. So we're good with steps one through four? All right, we're getting to my favorite part. Let me prepare myself. Number five, we have the triad of influence. Triad. It takes three important parts to have influence. Now, some of the people ask me all the time, what is influence? <clears throat> influence is when you're able to galvanize people to a result. Influence is when you're able to galvanize people and you're able to lead them to a result. So how do you create influence? You have your relationships. Okay, this is the triad, the three parts. First is your relationships. Those are people, they're probably going to do anything that you tell them to do. These are your friends. They're going to do whatever you tell them to do. Or even if they say no, you're okay, the friendship's intact, right? This is my new friend, Muriel. She took pictures of me. These are pictures of me, right? Yeah. See, she's going to do what I told her to do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so those are the people that are in your corner, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what? Six, nine months now? Mm -hmm. You brought her home. Okay, this is really important. Okay. <laughs> so those are the people are in your corner, your relationships. Okay? Next, you have your audience. The audience is the new people, right? For, this is my first time seeing several of y'all. Did anyone see me speak last year? Right, okay, so you're my audience. This is when you're in front of a new group of people, okay? Because once again, you have your core message and you're trying to distribute, you're trying to get your message out there. Okay? And the last thing you have is your community. This is where you're going to make your money, is with your community. These are the people that are going to pay you. These are people that are loyal followers. They're going to engage. They're going to share things that you post online. They're going to comment. They're going to tell you about opportunity. Hey, People Fund, they have their innovation week every May. You should speak, whatever, you know? That's part of your community. Now, if I do my job right, maybe this new audience will be a part of my community, right? What do I mean by that? Maybe you'll connect with me on LinkedIn, or you know, we'll start emailing each other, we'll, which can eventually lead to the relationship. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm keeping it really simple. Any questions on that? You have your relationships, audience. Community. Does that make sense? I can, I can get deep. But I'm going to connect the dots first. Okay? So that's the trial of the influence. Relationships, audience, community. Number six. Go from connections to credibility. From connections to credibility. Now this is key. Because we just left the triad of influence, right? 
So within that relationship, the, that audience and that community, you want to think about who are the people I can collaborate with, right? And these are people that have solidified their message, they have a platform, they have an audience. Is that making sense? Okay? And you want to be able to collaborate with them and it's a mutual beneficial exchange. Because you can't collaborate with everybody. You can't be selfish when you collaborate. So you want to make sure you're collaborating with someone on the same playing field as you. You're able to leverage each other in this opportunity that you're trying to create within synergy. Another part of that, from connection to credibility, is getting media attention, attention, right? So trying to jump on podcast interviews, write blog posts, submitting to you know major platforms uh, within your industry. Because I think what we like when we go to someone's website and it's like, oh, as featured in, as seen in, that solidifies their expertise. So you're going from connection to credibility. So this is the thing when it comes to credibility. Lots of times, that credibility that you're looking for goes back to the tribe of influence. It goes back to your relationships. It goes back to your audience. It goes back to your community. Because you want it to happen to those people that you're communicating with. Does that make sense? Follow me? <clears throat> so we have from connections to credibility. You, by doing that, by collaborating, you're getting media attention, you're increasing your visibility, um, you're increasing, you're growing your audience, and you're solidifying your expertise. And number seven. It's the best part. Show me the money. Show me the money. Now, it's my personal belief, in order for you to make money, you have to have a track record of results. Right? That's why people are gonna come to you. What have you done? Who are the clients you work with? Do you have any testimonials? LinkedIn recommendations, right? And if you're doing one through six, you're building that track record of results, whether it's for yourself, and be applied to clients, right? And people are gonna to come to you. And you're gonna make money through consultations, coaching, workshops, webinars, speaking, books. What else is there? Products, t-shirts. What else is there? There's, there's a bunch of ways to make money. Like, I think, I think we, like, we all know how to make the money. Like, we know what we want to do to make the money. It's just everything steps <laughs> before the money comes to us, right? But I truly believe if you do one through six and you're pushing yourself out there through your message and through different mediums, the money will come. I'm currently the marketing manager at Sullivan Style Law Firm, and... It was one of those things where, you know how you're looking for a job, but you're not applying? Like, let me, let me see what's on the be. And then like, oh, I checked off everything on the list. So I applied, and then I found out it was 10 minutes from my house. So I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, so I've been there for the past nine months or so, right? But then they were also looking at me, like, I've, I've done these things. And I think lots of times when it comes to a personal brand, there's so much focus on entrepreneurship, we lose sight of the corporate aspects as well, right? So the show me the money, maybe you're not focused on creating products and services. Maybe there are things that you need to establish within your job that's gonna allow you to negotiate when it comes time for the pay rate, right? So maybe the try to influence is about building deeper relationships with your coworkers and adding value to them. So there's many ways to look at it, but I know there's a lot of emphasis on entrepreneurship. I think the most important thing is just finding what's good for you and applying it as necessary. Now there's one thing I kind of 
Lance Dover, our number three, getting social with your story. The power of social media, right? Social media is a distribution channel. I work with a lot of um, clients, they're like, I don't know what to post. And I'm like, you don't know what to post because you haven't created any content. And that's why you're, if you know your core message and you're able to create stories from your core message, you're able to create content. That content is going to be established through your platform, right? And then you're able to share and distribute that through the social media channels. Social media is distribution. Now, a lot of people think, well, my podcast is on Facebook. You know, my podcast is Facebook Live. That's fine. The problem comes is what happens <coughs> when someone does a recording on Facebook Live, it tends to stay on Facebook Live and you ignore the potential audience you have on LinkedIn, the potential audience you have on YouTube. So that's why I kind of say you have the blog, a podcast, audio format, and then video. You can upload, I do video on my phone, I upload it to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and then Right, so it goes through all channels versus me just doing a Facebook Live and it's only on Facebook. Or I have to download it, upload it. That didn't work. Any questions? When it comes to getting social, how do you transition from uh, getting your story out there and, 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 uh, and then onboarding it to a sale? Because I can see you posting. Yeah, I'm doing this, I'm at this workshop. What is that segue point where you, you do something? What's that triggering point where you say this to get them to email so then you can then send them maybe a list of the services so you're not just sitting there all day posting and it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. fun and games? No, you're absolutely right. And then you eventually have to create the call to action. Right. Right. So I think lots of times what happens is kind of like, give me five hours. <laughs> now. <laughs> Are you gonna give me five dollars? You're not gonna give me five dollars? I just presented all seven. <laughs> but that's social media, right? <laughs> like you over here, I'm here. <laughs> that's social media. So it does take time, you know. But I mean, you have to nurture. You have to add value. I know for me, like the seven steps. If you go to my website, it's a free guide. My podcast is free. Um, I have articles on there, obviously, that are free, right? And I have a $10 ebook, or $10, well, I'm an ebook, right? And then the physical book is $10. And then the consultation is $100. And then it goes up from there, right? So even when it comes to pricing, you want to have um, a range of prices based on your audience, right? So they can, because you, have to get them acclimated to you, right? So that's why you constantly have to add value, and that value is going to vary from level to level. Right? So the $10 book is great, but if you sit down and you pay $100 for a consultation, when you pay $100, you're going to pay attention. <laughs> when you pay $1,000, you're going to pay attention, right? So, and that's going to be more valuable, it's going to be more intimate, right? Because now I'm catering to your specific need. What are your specific struggles? Not this broad base of seven steps, right? So, I think you just have to be careful with that. Um, provide value. Also ask. I believe in the power of the ask. And like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, also, Depending on what kind of business you have. Well, I just help people find a business they love. Okay. Make sure I do, um, basically I would convert businesses so people aren't just making money and okay. making a difference and they're keeping healthy as they're okay. doing it so that as you make money, you're around and enjoy what you're doing. Okay. So that's why I believe um, number three is so important, right? Why do you do that? When did you decide to do that? How did you do that? Because you can say, um, I'm a connection is What does that mean? I don't know. Sounds good, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you said. It did sound good. But if I tell you why, and there's so many whys, but I say, well, I wrote my first book called Network Navigate and Nurture. And there's a negative connotation to the word of networking. And I had to take a step back. It was like, what is going to get? more engaged the connection with 
volunteer and serve in the committee. So I volunteered to be on this nonprofit committee. Lo and behold, it's a national telethon. It's a national telethon for college and raising money for UNCF. So I go in there and I had redone the system where they're going from manual telethon to now it's all automated. Oh, wow. So that is automated and I did this for maybe 12 years. But in year five, something happened where the, the tote board slowed down, everything stopped, ground to a halt, because normally when entertainment's on, it slows, it frees up to be, oh, somebody's singing. And then when those commercials go so down, this was like dead for like a long time. So the producer said, you know what? Let's get one of these kids on the screen when we go back to commercial, <laughs> yeah. and let's let them tell why they need to go to college. Mm -hmm. So they got a guy and a kid, and a kid on the screen, he said, well, you know, I just love, I just love medicine, and I just know I've always wanted to do it. And then the choke boy started turning. He said, how much does a book cost? He said, it costs $100. Hey, okay, how many, let's see how many books we can buy this kid. And the kid's like, and his face lit up the whole place, and my heart just was like, like the Grinch, like 10 feet tall. <laughs> and I knew, I mean, I was like, I can describe my career like Clark Kent. I was this now mannered accountant by day and superhero by night and all this stuff. Yeah. And then one day I'm doing an account event and then an email changed my life. They said, we want you to, you know, be over this fund. It's, it's 4.3 million. I'm like, what's going on? But what happened was, as Harvey was raining and, this, and this accounting that I was doing, they started raising money, raise money to the kids because they didn't know what they wore. And the school system went from 75000 100000 and then $4.3 million. So in my resume, they saw what I had boots on the ground with I doing a transition. They said, look, we want you to head up this project. So now I got to do the thing I love See? and get paid for it. There was no turning back. There was no turning back. That's the story. That's the story. Right? So if you share that story to your audience, mm -hmm. potential audience, potential clients, mm -hmm. like now I know why I need to give my money to you. Because you can get the job done, you can get the results. You have a track record. Yes, and I can just show you, and it's just so ironic. I got to, and I can show it to people who don't believe me. I got a, I got a uh, text from a cons uh, mm -hmm. con school counselor. Because we ended the ball giving kids like $10,000. So I wrote the curriculum for why I'm giving you $10,000, I'm giving you $5,000. Mm -hmm. This kid exists. So I did a transparent uh, protocol where I could prove it, it would be taxable to you of why you got this mm -hmm. disaster relief, right? Free of charge. Furniture, appliances, whatever. This guy thing said, this kid just graduated from AM based on the scholarship you gave him a full ride. They're getting ready to go to New York and work in a, in a daycare system. They wouldn't be able to do it because they are special needs. <coughs> Said we and I said we emptied the vault on that kid's scholarship. Mm -hmm. you Drop the mic. All you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Say. If you don't make any more money, stuff like that, boy, your heart just beat ten times. Baby. <laughs> like everyone has it, you just have to find it, let it come out, release it. And then if you don't know how, I just gave it to you. Any other questions? <coughs> yes. So what do you say for introverts? I'm an introvert. A real intro introvert. This guy, she's telling me. I, I, look, you can say, you know, that's true. So Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is a. I'm, I'm an introvert. But I, I love speaking, so it's exciting. It's hard to be right. But I really think it's about your audience. Like, you just feel it yourself. You don't have to, you know. And maybe this isn't your thing. Maybe you just, you know, do a webinar. Right for your audience, for your full of people. Um, it's one of those things like everyone's not built for this, but we're built for our own. Right? If I may, uh, and part of that is what is your prevailing identity? I mean, for you to cast or speak about yourself in that way, you were still able to ask the question before you. So you start at a point of familiarity and realize that you're not a static character. You know, there's a pivot that you make and see what level that you're comfortable with and go after that. So if you're comfortable in the sense of doing a uh, lecture format versus a engagement or doing a radio format versus a group lecture like this, where you don't have to engage people on 
the level, then you begin to find a way where you're comfortable. But let go of the idea of being a static character. Oh, I'm an introvert. That means it closes off the rest of these opportunities for you. Look at it. if it is to happen, what would it look like based on what your first familiarity is? I love it. I love it. And I think another thing that could be helpful is if you you really view everyone um, in terms of your clientele as someone that you can service and be a servant or leader to. So when you think, what do they need? It takes the emphasis off of you. And then therefore you're able to, because it's funny, like, because I've worked for corporations, you know, my entire life. So now in the position of entrepreneurship, I'm like, no, I'm so good at promoting them. Now it's promoting me. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I, I don't I don't like all that emphasis on me, but I'm gonna have to get over that because you know, if you don't speak for yourself, there's no banner behind you, there's no marketing staff, it's it's just me. So it's just something I'm I'm thinking that if I don't if I don't serve in this lane, no one else will obviously. This is kind of my thought process to push me. And out and outsource the parts that are high touch, you know. I mean, for, for the way that you've been in business and the interpersonal piece, that's things that audiences you love is an interpersonal uh, dialogue. But in the parts that are more high touch, outsource it. Did anyone else have a question? I thought I handled it. Who's in your book? Is it hard or no? Yes, network, navigate, and oh, nurture, and success on the farm. Awesome. I love your business card, though. Thank you. Uh, I think there's one or two. Yeah, great business. Thank you. Um, but yes, connect with me on LinkedIn. How many are on LinkedIn? I know if you go to LinkedIn. Uh, on your, somewhere on your profile, it can say find nearby. Hold on, let me find out. <laughs> wow. All right, so when you go to your the icon with the people, like you have a new connection request, at least for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that top row, it should say view connections, and then it says find nearby. Wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you? Okay, the people. So where you have your connections? Your connection request? Are you on an Android right now? I am on an Android. It's a little different. Um, Is there a Sloan Young in here? Okay. Yeah. So I'm on the LinkedIn app. Right. So that's the connection request. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then right here, find nearby. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then if you, when you do find nearby, and you have your profile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you can connect. Connect the people immediately instead of. Um, I always have, yeah, and I always have my Bluetooth on, so when I go to LinkedIn, it's automatically happening for me, but you may have to adjust your settings. No. Okay. Okay, so what, where's the final? Okay, so you go, um, where your connections are Find your right there. And now, where the one yeah, you have to if you haven't used it, you probably have to turn it on. Yeah, you have to turn it on. Okay. What? I got you. You were on that. No. Who is that? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes.
your next show? Uh, my next podcast episode? I am going to talk about the African, launching the African American Marketing Association. Yeah. 